Because we want to know why we were created. Why we were created in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the devil tries to destroy that. The only thing the devil will try to destroy, not because you are born from this family, but he tries to destroy the reason why you are created. That's the only thing the devil tries to destroy. Amen. You know, he'll try, in fact, to destabilize your parents or your dad, whatever. Those ones, you know, you pray over them, God answers prayer. But there's a vision, there's a reason why God created you. That's the most important thing. That's why the devil fights every day. But if we rise up and pray and be strong and call on God, our prayers that reach heaven or the throne of grace, things in our lives will come to reason. And we will understand why we were created in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Open with me in the book of Mark. How many of you know Jesus overcame the devil 2,000 years ago? How many of you know no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper? Amen. <laughs> created to be victorious. Created to be powerful. Created to be strong. Hallelujah. We will never fail in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. From verse 11, chapter 4, verse 11. And Jesus said to them, To you it is been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all the things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven of them. Verse 13. And he said to them. Do, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Now he goes to verse 14. He's explaining the parable. He said the sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside. Where the word is sown. When they, when they hear. Satan comes immediately. And takes away the word. That was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on the stony ground. Who when they hear the word. Immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. And so endure only for a time. Afterwards when tribulation or persecution arises. For the word's sake. Immediately they stumble. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown on thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things entering in choke the word and becomes unfruitful. Verse 20. But these are the ones who sown on good ground. Those hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Amen. Father, I thank you for this morning as we're going to share the word. Father, I pray that you may open our hearts so we can serve you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So God is talking about a sower. Somebody says sower. sower. Yeah, because there are two issues here. We have the seed by the sower, and then we have the ground. It's because if you're sowing a seed, it goes into the ground. So if you read the parable from the perspective of the sower, we get a better understanding of why Jesus called it the parable of a sower. Because a sower, I remember my, mother, my, my grandmother, she used to wake up, when we, we went there to visit her, she used to wake up at five in the morning, and it used to still dark. She went with her seeds and sowed. And then by the time for you, you wake up, you know, on holidays, you're young. When you wake up, you don't see her in the house. She's, gone, she's coming back at 9 or 10. She's done. She went with seeds and she sowed. But then after, a, 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 you know, may, maybe uh, three weeks, then you begin to see the plant coming out. So Jesus is teaching about the kingdom of God from the perspective of a sower. Amen? Amen. But also he's teaching about the kingdom of God from the perspective of the ground. So the sower sows a seed. Now who's the sower? Our God is the one who plants the seeds. God is talking about the kingdom of God. Amen? And so Jesus came to sow seeds. Now when Jesus is talking about this parable, a story, he's talking about the seeds scattered all over. Some fell. 
on a dry ground where people walk all the time. Now, that ground is not cultivated. It's hard. Remember? Obukubo Wetaka in Uganda, those small roads, Panya. People used to pass there. Because they pass there all the time, the ground becomes hard. So if you just put the seed there, it doesn't go down. It doesn't get roots to grow. So Jesus gives types of four seeds. But we have to look, first of all, from the perspective of the sower. Why did he come? Why is he throwing all the seeds everywhere? You know, as a sower, what you would do, you would say, you know, I'm looking for the good ground so I can sow my seeds. But God is talking about the kingdom of God. So which means that when God says, I'm sowing my seed to, the, to everybody, I'm sowing my seed, I, I just give my seed to everyone. I'm not picky. So no excuse. Don't say, oh, Lord, I never had the word. Oh, you are, you are picky. You're only giving the word to some people. No, the gospel is for everyone. Praise the Lord. Everyone is to hear the gospel. That's why the sower says, the sower came and threw seeds. He threw seeds everywhere. To some people who are going to hear, some people who are, have hard hearts, they don't want to hear. Some people are on the, in their hearts are like the rock, you know. So, but everybody gets a chance. Amen. Amen. So you cannot say, Lord, how come I, didn't, I never got? No. Some soils are soft to receive the word of God. It comes it gets in the ground, and boom, it begins to bear fruits. But then some, so we're going to look at all the four categories of soils, you know, four types of soils, amen? So Jesus shares this, the, the sower scattered seed, the word of God, on all types of ground. He did not say that he was uh, planting the seeds in just on the good soil. It says he was scattering the seeds everywhere. Doesn't that seem wasteful? Because if, you are, you know, if, you are, if you're planning, you don't just want to put your, your investment in something that you know is going to be wasted. But you want to show your love. Amen. Who knows? How many of you have seen some seeds growing on a rock? And, you're like, and some seeds are so powerful, they separate the rock and they go deeper. Yeah. So that's the kingdom of God. God, the Bible says, God is not a respecter of persons. He loves everybody the same. Yes. He gives everybody a chance. You don't say, you know, some people say, you know, for me, I come from a bad background. Ah, we are all people who, who just not, don't believe in God. Even in that family, God will, will throw a seed. Oh, you know, for us, we've never had a chance to hear. But, you know, one day I was passing by. I had somebody preaching the gospel. That's when God is throwing a seed into your family. You know, people deny the presence of God. But sometimes even in your family, people mail things that talk about the gospel of God. And you say, ah, this is about Bible. Oh, you push it away. In America these days, if you, you go to somebody's office and somebody has a Bible in front, they can even sue you. We don't want the word of God. But guess what? Even as you walk in the office and you see the Bible, what God is doing is throwing a seed, a word of God, into your life. There's a chance for everybody to receive God's word. The kingdom of God is for everyone. Because I was saying, Lord, how come the sower was just scattering seeds? Why? Because God is making sure that everybody gets a chance to hear the word of God. It's up to you to say yes or no. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, we may think the sower is, is wasteful. No, the purpose of this is to make sure everybody gets a chance. Amen? Amen. Because what, when you see, he says he throws some seeds on the dry ground, some in the thorns, some on the hard rock, some, some you can never tell why God is throwing them. Some of them you can see, some you can't see. Amen. Amen. Now, but remember what Jesus said earlier. If you open in Luke chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus answered and said, It is not healthy. It's not that the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Christ makes it clear that he came to rescue sinners. His purpose was to bring salvation to everyone. So never blame, say, oh, you know, and this one doesn't need the gospel. This one doesn't need the deliverance. No, it is the sick who needs a, a doctor. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
So everybody needs a doctor. As far as I know. We are all sinners. The Bible says we came short of the glory of God. You wake up in the morning. You plan to do good. Somebody crosses in front of you. You curse a word. Or somebody curses. You know sometimes somebody is too slow as you're driving. And you begin to say bad words. Somebody didn't do anything bad to you. And most of the time, those elderly people are keeping the speed limit. It is you who is wrong. You're blaming them for nothing. You begin to say, this are, look, this old woman, those old woman. You wait after 50 years, you will see yourself. Somebody will be saying the same thing behind you. We are, you know, and then you say, Lord, I'm sorry. Why did I even say this to this woman? Because we are in sin nature. We are all sinners. We need the gospel. We need the seed of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We need the word of God. If you clap your hands, clap them for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Jesus said, it is the healthy who can stay away. But those who are not healthy, the sick, need a doctor. We all need a doctor. We, not, we need Dr. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Christ, Christ makes it clear that he came to rescue sinners. His purpose was to bring salvation to everyone. The meaning of the parable of the sower is twofold. I told you, one, we see it from the perspective of the sower, another one from the soil. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's talk about the soils now. We cannot ignore completely any type of soil. You can't say, you know, this is good, this is bad. That's why when you, you know, when we preach the gospel, whoever, you come to church. You come as you were. Huh? You see, we've been dancing here, dancing with the music has been beautiful, amen. Everybody has been happy. But does that mean that somebody received it? But how do you receive the word of God? It goes into your heart. Amen. And then it begins to transform you and change you and make you into a new person. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Jesus knew that most of the people in the crowd would say, wow, what a great story. And sometimes when we leave church, what do we say? What, what a great preaching. But do you go back with the same word so that the word that you received can bear fruits in your life? And move, you know, you don't just say, Lord, it was a good you know, good word, you move along, you talk to somebody, it was a good word, they ask you what was it, you say you're not sure, but it was good. So when Jesus ended the parable, he says this, he who, who, the one who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. Now, what Jesus is saying, I did my part, now if you have, if you have your ears, he's not talking about the outside ear, He's talking about the inner ears. The one that receives the word of God. Hallelujah. So we have to receive God's word and go and bear fruits every day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, they come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, what does this mean? The disciples themselves. Why do you talk to us in parables? So if you see in verse 11, he says, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom. Of heaven. Anything that is a mystery, it is hidden. You can't see it. It's not obvious. It is there, but you don't see it. Amen. For example, I have my phone here. I can cover it with my handkerchief. And the next thing you don't see. It. Wow, Pastor is a magician. I don't see it now. <laughs> It's a mystery. You have to seek the, the presence of God. What does the Bible say in Isaiah chapter 40? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So you have to wait on God. Seek God. So your strength is there to seek the presence of God. To know the mystery. To know the purpose of your creation. Why you are created. Somebody say amen. Amen. I was created to bless God, to love God. Hallelujah. When the mystery is still there, you know, for example, even in marriage, somebody say in marriage. marriage. You can see people walking and you say, wow, those are married. But some, it, sometimes it takes 10 years to know who your partner is. <laughs> yeah. Or five years. Some people, 20 years. 
I work in a nursing home. Sometimes you still see them fighting. I said, man, you're too old to be fighting. I said, she's like that. Ever since I married this woman, she's like that. <laughs> Ever since I married this man, he's like that. And then next thing you see them at the table eating together, smiling. Somebody say, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. That's why you shouldn't stop coming to church. Every day come, yes. if it's possible. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can know our God because God has a purpose for your creation. Stop hiding your Bible under the bed. Bring it out so you can know what God wants you to do. Amen. There's a reason for your creation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you keep, if you keep seeking God, then God will be like, okay, there you go. Yeah. So when they came to Jesus, Jesus, please tell us, tell us. Then Jesus was like, okay, let me tell you. So he revealed to them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the kingdom of God. Somebody said, that's the kingdom of God. So Jesus said, it's a mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, those who don't come to seek, they don't get the revelation. But those who come to me, they get the revelation. What does the Bible say? It says, come to, you, to me, you who are tired and heavy, burdened, and I'll give you, you just come to Jesus. Amen. Nobody, you know, sometimes I can feel like, Lord, today, I worship, I feel your presence, but every day we need the bread of God. Tomorrow is going to be another challenge. Tomorrow I'm going to need another prayer. Tonother, tomorrow I'm, I'm going to need another encouragement from my wife, from, from, from another friend. Amen. Somebody, every day we need to seek the presence of God. It's a mystery. Yeah. The kingdom of God is a mystery. Yeah. The song you sang yesterday is not enough. You need to sing another song today. To take you through in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The prayer you prayed yesterday is not enough. You need to pray another prayer today. To go through again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember when we were. Especially we who went to the boarding school in Uganda. Sometimes you remembered what you ate. When you are at home. When you are hungry. That's when you say. I wish I finished this. I finished the food. <laughs> On Christmas day. Because now I'm hungry. But guess what? That food is not working anymore. Yes. <laughs> what you need is the beans with kawukumi that day. And the muwago. And the bijanjaro. And the posho. That's what you need. The food you had the other time. Gone. It's a mystery. Every day. Jesus says to those who are outside. Somebody say I'm not outside. I'm inside the kingdom of God now. Because I need to know the reason why I'm created. <laughs> the Bible says, so that seeing they may see and not perceive. Hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven. In other words, there's a chance for everybody to receive forgiveness from God. There's a chance for everybody to be forgiven. Just bring yourself in the presence of God. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Because everybody's given. You know what's amazing? The same sun that melts the wax is the same sun that dries the clay. Yes. Did you know that? The same. But it depends. Are you clay or are you, a, are you, are you wax? Make sure that when you come to church, you live softer before the presence of God and don't be like clay. Some people, when you come, don't live out more angry, live with the joy of the Lord. Amen. Don't come out more angry. No, you are in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. The same sun, you put the wax there and the clay. By the next day, the wax is melted, the clay is more harder. See, this woman is going to church every day. This man is going to church every day. What's wrong? Your perspective towards the word of God. Amen. That's what matters. Because if you don't, your heart will become even harder. You'll be the one in the church even giving people more hard time. Because your heart is more harder. But if you soften your heart, you'll be like softer. Because the Bible says, God will take a stony heart out of you and give a heart of the flesh. 
Because the heart of the flesh is the one that pumps. The one that becomes hard. Hey, you can do whatever you do and they're like, no, I'm not going to do it. Or I decided to do this. I'm not going to change it. Until when they run into trouble. I wish I listened. I'm not alone. I've done it. Don't think that because I'm preaching, I'm here. I've, I've done mistakes in my life. But it teaches us that the same, so God is saying the same word, it falls on all types of soils. The hard one, the thorny one, the rocky one, and the good one. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's all we, the hearts, we are receiving God's word. But how are we going to understand the mystery of the kingdom is when we daily come to the presence of God. When we daily come to receive from the nourishment that comes from heaven. When we daily surrender to God. When, they, when we daily have a desire to know God. Hallelujah. Don't, don't keep yourself in the, in the same mistake. Just jump out and say today is a new day. I'm going to make it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't say Lord yesterday was bad. Well when you wake up today is a new day. Today is a new day. Today is a new day. So we are going to believe God's word. Whatever God gives me is going to make me rise up. It's going to make me great. It's going to make me powerful. I will sing a new song. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know? We always see, we think the problem is the world. No. The problem is with the soil. Here in America, if you're buying land, if you're buying land, there's, there's, you don't just buy like in Uganda. Did you know that? They, 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 have, they, they have what companies that come and see deep down what is there. Huh? For you, you're excited to have land. You don't know whether there was a gas station there and they left tanks there. You build a house, you are there sleeping, and one time it explodes. Here, you buy land. You, you, we're not talking about buying a house. They have done the job already. But if you say, I'm buying land, the company has to do an inspect underneath. What is down there? Why? Because that's going to be your life. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we have to let God inspect our hearts deep down so that when this, the word of God comes, there's no confusion, there's no distraction. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's for you to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. The reason why God is giving the seed or giving you this chance is not to make you like you're going to go to hell or you're going to lose your life. No, God is giving us a chance to live again and have everlasting life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God said in one time in the Bible, he said, Israel has the uncircumcised ear. What does it mean? It means that I, the ear that never listens. I never knew the, if, uh, uh, the ear that is in the flesh. You hear things, but you never perceive them in the spiritual realm. You hear them in the... And then you leave it there. So God was blaming Israel and said, please, you need to circumcise your ear. In other words, to make it spiritual so you can hear my word. Amen. You can draw, let me tell you what, you can draw a horse to water, but you can, you can never make it drink it. Preachers, even you, if you, go, if you go to your home and you invite people, share a word with them, you can do all that, but you can never force somebody to believe in Jesus. But Jesus still told us, go into the whole world and preach the gospel. Amen. We should not stop doing God's word, no matter what the situation. We continue Every day, every moment in our homes, preaching is not just here in church, on the street, in your, with your friends, at your place of work. You can still share God's word. Amen. What we have to do is to understand that you can't force them. The Holy Spirit will draw people into the presence of God. You just do your job of sharing God's word. Amen. Now, this, the third one is the seed among the thorns. They hear the word. But do nothing with it. They know the word, but don't try to accept it. They teach it, but they don't practice it. Huh? The pleasures and the riches and the prosperity. Now, those things take it away. Not because those things are powerful. No. 
Those things, the riches, the pleasures, take it, the word of God away. It's because you have not used faith to put the seed down. You hear that? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because you received God's word and did nothing about it. But if you did something, those thorns will not, are not going to penetrate your life. The riches won't take away your faith. The pleasure won't take away your faith. You know, the pleasure is the joy of the Lord. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Does it mean that God doesn't want us to prosper? God wants us to prosper. But what God is saying, those things choke your faith. Let me, now, 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 now let me tell you, those things should increase your faith. Instead, amen. When God blesses you, you rejoice more into the presence of God. When David brought the ark of the covenant back, the Bible says he danced for the Lord. Amen. amen. When God blesses you with a car, don't say, Lord, you blessed me with a car. I'm not going to go to church because I have to wash it. And yeah, people give you that reason. It has been snowing for two weeks. I need to wash my car. So no church today. And then you've been praying before. Lord, I need a car so I can go to church. The pleasures of the world only affect you if you say yes. But if you say no, they won't touch you. Huh? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Even though the seed was planted in good soil, the thorns choke it. Just like these things. Amen? Begin. You begin to feel like, ah, you know what? I'm blessed. I don't have. Remember when you first came here? Nothing. You wake up, you say, Lord, what can I do? How many of you, you remember God when you're in trouble? It happens so quickly. But once the trouble's over, oh my God, they're begging you. Please come to church. Please, let's pray. Please, 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 please. please. Why? Because the things that God blessed you with, they are choking you. The thorns are entering. But you don't realize, you know thorns don't grow one day. Did you know that? They go, they, they, when they are pinching you, you don't even feel them. You know, we, we, in, in, in the medi medical field, we know people who have diabetic, diabetic what? Neuropathy? Diabetic people? They can hit their toes and they don't feel anything. They are numb. Then they, they see blood, they're like, wow, where's this blood coming from? They cut their toes, but because of their condition, they're not able to realize. Amen. The pleasures of the world don't come at once. They go slow. Slow. We used to play this game when, when our brothers are sleeping or our sisters. You get something, you go slow, you put it on their mouth, and they continue to eat. You see them enjoying. Because, but if you go fast, boom, they're going to wake up. But, oh, what is this? <laughs> so when the devil is trying to put you down, it's not going to come at once. Boom, 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 boom. It's going to come slow. Hello? When you are so strong in church, you never, you used to say, no, I don't, I don't call anybody. I don't go on Facebook. I don't go on WhatsApp because today is Sunday. Then that Sundays you begin to compromise. Facebook. 30 minutes you're on Facebook. One hour you're on WhatsApp. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say, now pastor, pastor, you're preaching now. Amen. And then all of a sudden, as you're opening the newspaper, entertainment, you say, oh, there's this movie going on on this channel. Oh, man, I'll miss it. And my recorder's broken. Let me, let me watch it a little bit. Sometimes I call people and I, how come you didn't show up on church? Can you imagine, pastor, I can't even give you a good reason. <laughs> I cannot. But I did and then I moved around and then and the next thing I know, I couldn't believe the time was gone. I don't know why time goes fast on Sunday. Who told you that? <laughs> it's the same every day. Do you know what is happening now? Those thorns are doing what? Closing in into your life slow. They don't, they don't rush. They don't do what? Slow. When you go for safari in, in, in Kenya, they say if, if, if the animal is passing by, or if, if the land, just don't, don't move. 
If you, if you scare it, it's going to attack you. The devil, when the devil is going to get you, he's not going to, because he knows that once he comes like that, you're going to call on the blood of Jesus. Devil go. And the devil will go. He's going to come slow until when you realize that you can't even call on the, on the blood of Jesus. When you can't, you can't pray anymore. You take it to be normal every day. He says, this is normal. This is, this, is, this is okay. I don't feel any change. I just missed one Sunday. I just missed a, every morning we pray. We just missed one more, more morning prayer. And then the next time, it becomes a little bit normal. Oh, I missed the other time. Life goes on. Nothing wrong has happened. Oh, so and so is praying. So why should I bother? No, brother or sister, you have to keep on, keep on seeking for the mystery of the kingdom of God. It's a mystery. The kingdom of God is a mystery. When the seed falls on the good ground, the good soil, the thorns come in slow and eat your life up. But today we are victorious in Jesus' mighty name. We're going to take the word of God and we're going to apply it. Hallelujah. Now the, the last soil is the good soil. The Bible says it, it yielded crop a hundred times even more. A hundred times. Because it was good soil. It received God's word. It, em it embraced it. It prayed over it. Amen. You know the disciples when they knew Jesus told a disciple, a, a parable, they said, please tell us. We have to have the please in our life every day. Please Lord, what is it going to be today? How are you going to bless me today? How am I going to be sad? Every day there has to be a please before Jesus. Amen. Then Jesus said to those who are, not, who are outside, who are not bothering to seek me, they hear but they don't hear. They see but they don't see. But to us who have the desire to seek the presence of God, God will reveal the mystery of the kingdom to us. Amen. And he has in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to pray to, with you today. Amen. As we're going to worship. Just be in the presence of God. Amen. You didn't come here for anybody. You came for Jesus. Hallelujah. You came for who? Jesus. You came for Jesus. Let that be your prayer today. Lord, the word that you've put in my life, let it have roots. Let it, have, let it bear fruits. Amen. Let there be growth in me. Stop depending on yesterday. Today's a new day. Lord, I, I believe this word. Is going to bear fruit in my life. The word of God is powerful. What is wrong is not the word. What is wrong is not the seed. What is wrong is the soil. The type of soil. If it has fallen on you. Make sure you have the good soil. Without the thorns. It's not rocky. It's not a hard ground. Amen. Amen. Let's, let it be like not only on Sunday. But every day. We have a desire to bear fruits every day, every day. Turn to your neighbor as a neighbor. It has to be every day when we bear fruits in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, rise up on your feet and let's clap our hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you.